Hey guys, so this video is brought to you by Linode. This is the company that I actually host my websites from. So when I'm collecting data, analyzing, scraping, automating, I'm usually building websites and or testing them. And those websites I am testing for my personal stuff is always used with uh, Linode. So the reason why is because they have great service. They've been around for 15 years. They're the largest privately held uh, or privately owned cloud hosting provider out there. And they have data plans that pretty much suit everybody's needs. So make sure you guys check them out. You can scale with Linode as, as large as you want. And just uh, be sure to check them out. There is a $20 discount credit in the link in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we're gonna be looking at how to get started web scraping in 2020. And uh, the reason why web scraping is important is it's not just about collecting data, which is really the primary purpose of web scraping. It's also about testing and automation, and that's something that's huge in the corporate world. There's so much time spent doing manual processes where you could just simply write a program that does work that would take humans, like a single human, thousands of years, and you could write a program that does it in a matter of days. And that's one of the coolest things about programming. When you see like the, the, the code that you've written that's actually doing work that you've had to do manually, that's one of the best feelings in the world, really. So if I right click inside of this Open Explorer, I can say Open in Terminal. And when you're, whenever you're creating a modern day project, if it's using any sort of like Webpack, Babel, Node, um, you're gonna wanna create an initialization file, which it creates something called a package.json file, but you say npm space, init, which is short for initialization. And it asks you a bunch of questions here. I'm gonna press enter for most of this stuff. I'll put my name in here. All right, and then now it creates this package.json file for your empty folder. And this is what's gonna keep track of everything that your project needs in order to, uh, to run. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and say, if we're in the same directory where the package.json file was created, which is the same directory we, we were just in when we created that file, uh, if we install something, it's going to install it locally to that folder. And that's really an important concept. It's one of the reasons why in PHP development, they used to use pair for like package management, and now they use um, uh, compass, which is something that they used. Uh, I think it's compass. Psych, it's called composer, but who cares? I don't actually write PHP code. But anyway, that actually keeps track of local pro like local things that you install better than than pair did it used to install stuff like globally into one folder so everybody was sharing the same thing so if you had like we'll see in this uh this tutorial that we're going to use puppeteer but if you were to use pair it would install puppeteer once but the problem is is like you could have a project that uses puppeteer and it uses an older version and your newer code needs to use a newer version like for a new project and you don't want to share that same, um, that you know that that same puppeteer installation because there's two different dependencies there. There's one that's dependent on the newer version, and one that's dependent on the older version. But in a nutshell, that's why we create this uh, this config file, and we install things locally. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to install uh, puppeteer. Now, one of the dependencies that you need for this project, as well as Visual Studio Code, is you do have to use Node. And Node is what we use for NPM, which is the package manager. So if you're doing any sort of modern development for the web, then you probably already have Node and Visual Studio Code installed. But those are the two things you need in order to do what I just did. So now you can see, because we installed it, it put it in our dependencies here, so the project needs it. We can go ahead and create our first file, which we're going to call our index.js file. And that's like index is kind of a normal name for like your starting point. It's almost like your main function for a lot of programs. And if you want to use Puppeteer, which we just installed, we want to go ahead and create a constant variable for that so that we can reference the library. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and now that we've created that variable, we can now reference the library through that. So let's create a function that we're actually going to use uh, Puppeteer with. So it's going to be an asynchronous function. So let's go ahead and create that. So say async, and then we're just going to say function, and we'll just call it main. 
All right, and then inside of here, what we need to do is go ahead and define the browser that we're gonna go ahead and use. And by default, this thing uses Chrome. So it downloaded this project called Chromium, which is what Chrome is built off of. So we're gonna create a constant browser object. And because this is an asynchronous function, we're, we're going to do an await statement here to say, go ahead and use Puppeteer. And we're gonna call the launch method. And the launch method is going to take in a, um, a dictionary, or I'm sorry, it's really a JavaScript object, dictionary in Python, but it's key value pairs. And it's also called a hash array in Perl, just to let you know. It's all the same data structures, essentially, for all these languages we use. But anyway, it's key value pair. And we're going to say headless equals false, because we want to see the actual browser get brought up and, uh, and shown in front of our face. And, and there's going to be a reason for that, and I'll show you in a moment. But let's just go ahead and um, we'll leave that there uh, as far as our browser object. But now that we've created it, what we can do is we can go ahead and request a web page with it. So we're going to go ahead and create a, um, a constant called page. And we're going to say equals, and this is also an await statement. And we're going to use the browser that we just initiated. And we're going to say new page. And we're going to call it as a method. Because it's really just a big class prototypical object with a method on, to, on it called new page, which spins up a new page. So if I were to just simply call the function as it stands right now, let's go ahead and just call it. Now, we're moving real quick on this, uh, but I don't have time. I'm just kidding. But you guys don't have time either. So let's just jump into the, the nitty gritty. So when I actually develop in VS Code using Node, I want to use the editor for my debugging. So what I'm going to do is say, uh, go to this debug panel at the top, say start debugging, and then ask you what, what you want to debug with. So I'm going to say Node.js. And if you have Node.js installed, then it's going to work. Now, because we named it index, it knows to go ahead and fire off the index. So here you can see Chromium brought up a new page. And it's like it doesn't go anywhere. We didn't put anything into the URL, but automatically we now have Chrome working through that, you know, just those few st uh, short statements. All right, so now when we actually want to go to a uh, a page, what we're going to do is do an await statement, say page.go to. And then here, what I can do is just go ahead and give an actual page. So let's just say, let's go to Google. And it's probably going to be an HTTPS actually. So we're going to say go to google.com. And now let's run the program again by pressing F5. And now it goes to, to Google Chrome. All right, so a few things that are going on right now. This is one of the best ways to develop because these days when you're, when you're scraping data, back in the old days when I was first getting started programming, you had to use HTTP libraries. And the reason why is because we didn't have a bunch of JavaScript that rendered data onto the screen. These days though, you have all this JavaScript that has to be executed. But how do you execute JavaScript? You have to have a browser environment because JavaScript only runs inside of a browser. So that's why we use things like Selenium, and Puppeteer, and it, it just it, it, it uses Chrome externally, so it can use Chrome to go ahead and execute all that JavaScript and build a page, and we can automate that and grab all the data that's being collected or rendered. All right, so instead of hitting up Google and scraping other people's websites, I want to go to this alternativejs.com, which is the site that I own, so it doesn't matter if you guys want to practice and scrape on this one. And it's just a simple website that's actually using lit HTML and a couple of other things is like a React Angular alternative. So I called it alternativejs.com and I have bigger aspirations for that, but just not enough time. But what if I wanted to get this title here, right? So I'm just trying to get this element, this title. And Chrome allows us to do that very easily. So if I have Chrome open, I, I just right click and inspect on this element. If you have the elements tab open, which it should, it should automatically open when you right click and say inspect element, you could say, you can see like the, the, the element that we actually want to get where the text is, this alternative, is highlighted for us. So if I right click on the highlighted portion and say copy XPath, I can now reference this XPath in our code. So I'm going to kill this and I'm going to create an element called let my elements equals and I'm going to say page dot and then there's this built in X command like dollar sign X and this is where you pass in that the XPath value of the element that you're trying to get. Uh, so by default, uh, let me go ahead and run this and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna put a breakpoint after the element. So if I run this, I wanna show you that by default, this XPath selector is going to return an array of elements. So if I highlight over this, uh, shit, it's supposed to be a, uh, a sync. Uh, I like to leave the errors in here. 
I like to leave the errors in here. So this is, you saw that it returned a promise. So what you need to do is you need to await the result of it. So when you start using a sync and await, they're all promises and uh, asynchronous functions. You have to wait for one uh, to finish before you can access certain things. So that little simple await thing, now it does what I want it to do. So it's a uh, array of values here. And it would also be helpful if I actually changed the goddamn URL to, uh, to alternative.js as well. So obviously that XPath does not exist on google.com. So I'm going to change this over to uh, www.alternative.js.com. All right, so now by doing that, this I, I want to show you it returns an array of values when you use this XPath selector. All right, so now when you highlight over my elements, you can see that it's an array. There's one value, and it's inside of here. So if I was just looking for one value, and I know that there's only one value to be found, I could just call this my element. But I'm going to say, you know what, return the first item of the array, which should be the only one in there on this particular page. So if I look, my element is undefined. Oh, how annoying. So I, you, know, you can't chain that, apparently. You can't chain that command. God dang. This is programming for you. I'm just going to leave all this in there. <sighs> Piece of shit. All right, so anyway, you get the array. You got one value in here. So now if I was like, you know what? Let title equal my element. I could just say element. Now this will work. So if I were to restart this, hit my breakpoint, title is going to at least be the single element that we were looking for. You can see it's this one element. I don't know why you can't just chain the array onto the end. I, I, I would figure if it's going to return an array, I could just simply index like the value of the array after the function call, but apparently you can't. So anyway, you have to kind of spell it out. So here is my title, but it's returning that single element of the array. And that element is not something uh, that we can just like get that title from. So one of the things that I don't like about Puppeteer is you do have to be pretty verbose about what you're looking for, but I guess you'll get used to it. So anyway, we're going to say that uh, to, in order to get the actual text, we're going to say uh, await since everything is like asynchronous to the core. And this is a function that we're actually going to do another await inside of to say our element. Um, or I'm sorry, my element. And we're going to reference that zero value. All right, and then uh, from here, what we can do is say get property. And this is a function call. We're going to say we want the inner text of that property. And then after that second uh, curl, the, the second parenthesis uh, closing statement, we want to say get the JSON value. And that's also a function call. And we have an extra parenthesis there. All right, so there should be two ending parentheses here that are hugging this statement. So all that statement should be there, and then we're getting the JSON value of that. So I know that that's somewhat verbose. It's just you have to do that with Puppeteer. But once you get used to it, you do it over and over again. M normally, I can tell you that you don't actually reference a value through the zero index. You're probably going to get a bunch of elements. Like if you're trying to get me, like go to some movie site, give me all the, uh, the matching elements that have this X path, and it returns like 20 of them. You would just loop over that and use instead of just hard coding the zero. It's going to be you know that whatever the, uh, the the numerator is in your in your loop, your for loop, that you're going to be looking at. But long story short, that's how you can see uh, that we can get this alternative title from the page, and we could get any other element on that page doing the same method. So if you're trying to automate some sort of page or you know get some sort of data, rock music, movies anything you're into medical stuff exercising who the hell knows a amazon whatever it is you can automate and get the values using that simple uh not really simple but that that uh that that method there just do what i did basically if you're looking for the data all right and just to go ahead and wrap this up i don't want to make this video too long but what i'm going to do is show you can also take screenshots of the page that you're scraping so i can say page screenshot and this is a method and you just need to pass in a, uh, a location. The first argument for this, uh, this dictionary key value pair is you have to pass in a path. And the path is just going to say, where do you want me to save the file and what should it be called? And we're just going to say 
my um, my page dot png. All right, and by doing this uh, forward slash here, the, the dot forward slash, that's going to be the root directory from wherever this project is running. And this should save the screenshot for the page that you just scraped inside of uh, your root directory of your project. And here you can see that it created this PNG, and it has the page right there, so that's what I was talking about. All right, so let's stop that real quick. And then finally, to just wrap things up, whenever you're actually scraping data, a lot of times you want to save your data, obviously. Otherwise, you're kind of wasting your time. So we're going to create the file system uh, object, and we need to go ahead and require the file system module. You don't have to install this. It's actually It comes with Node. It's what allows Node to read and write files. And then we can just simply say uh, fs.write file. And we're going to do it synchronously. So we don't have to do any callbacks or anything like that. And we're going to say, what do we want to write? And the same way that we just did the screenshot, we're going to say my data. And I typically do like a TXT file. And then the second argument, you want to pass the actual data that you're writing to the file. And uh, by doing that, you can write a file for the data that you just scraped. And obviously, whenever you're building your scrapers and things like that, you're going to be doing probably a lot more sophisticated stuff. But this uh, went ahead and showed you how to do screenshots, how to automate um, the collection of that information, also write text files using just Node.js, Visual Studio Code, and Puppeteer. And you can see that I have this alternative title. So again, you have to look at this in the concept of, okay, if I was going to build a uh, a music website and I'm into to rap music or whatever, how are you going to get every rap artist from like all the way to the 80s all the way till now? You know, you're going to go to Wikipedia, you're going to go here, you're going to go there. You could just simply um, get all of that data. You could write a new file and name the file the actual band, right? And then instead of just saying the name of the band, you could actually get their genre, their labels, their their members, all that shit. And like you could write it to the same text file, which is what I would recommend. But and that's where you come into delimiters. So like uh, for me, I I use like pipe sign delimited files. So if I'm a, I'm gonna get a band name, that'll be like the first thing. That'll be a pipe sign. Then it'll be like their origin, pipe sign, genre, pipe sign. And then when I read the file, I can just simply split the file on that pipe sign so that I can get an array of elements. And I'll know that the first element of that array is going to be the title and the second is the, the genre or whatever I said originally. But that's basically how I do my screen scraping and data collection and automation. So anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. And uh, let me know what you think. Please subscribe, vote up, and share, or at least just subscribe. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.